Good morning, everybody. Uh, Nicole here uh, with Dear Teacher Coaching. And today, I am going to show you uh, three different ways that you can record and upload videos for your students. In this current time of distance learning, I think people are really figuring out that this is something that's pretty important. Um, but this is also something that should be used uh, it could be used to flip classrooms. It should be used, you know, without this whole distance learning business that's going on. Um, because what's really nice is it you are giving instruction one time, the kids can access it multiple times, and then that literally frees you up during your class time with your students to be moving around the room and conferencing with kids and asking questions and guiding them and leading them and all of those kinds of things. So videos are an awesome, awesome tool uh, to just kind of level up your teaching a little bit. So the very first way, and probably one of the absolute easiest ways, is to use the camera app on your computer. So um, I have been in both Apple schools, so Mac schools, if you will, and I have been in Microsoft schools. So we have HPs at the school that I'm currently at. So down by the Microsoft window where you can type here to search, if you just type camera, you can open that up. It's gonna show your face. It doesn't show your screen. I'll show you a different way that you can do that. Um, but it'll just show your face and you can record it. It saves it into your camera roll and you can create your own folders within that. And you can post those videos. So if you want something like of your face where you're kind of almost doing a lecture or guiding them that way, uh, this is the perfect way to do this. This is how I'm doing this specific part of this video today. So first way is your camera app on your computer. You can save it just as an mp3 file and then, or mp, excuse me, mp4 file and then you can go ahead and upload that wherever you need to. Um, say you're putting it into like a video creation thing or even if you just want that one video segment to be uploaded into your um, online learning management system then you can just throw it on there. It's fine. So you can um, save that video file. You can either upload the file directly from your computer or you can also put that file if you have a channel on YouTube and you have kids following your YouTube channel, you can go ahead and throw it on there as well. Um, just make sure that you're giving the appropriate access and the appropriate permissions on that YouTube channel. So first way, just simply use the camera app that's already available on your computer. The second way I'm going to show you how to do a recording is actually a screen recording. So the easiest way that I have found to do this is adding the Screencastify Google Chrome extension. So this is what it looks like. You can either go to screencastify.com or you can go into the uh, Google Chrome store and search for the extension Screencastify and go ahead and add it. And then you'll notice over here in the upper right hand corner, you'll see that it is actually recording. So a couple of cool things is when you do end up clicking that button is you can do webcam only, your entire desktop, or just a browser tab. So if you're like a lot of teachers, you tend to have a lot of tabs open. And if you have something you don't specifically want the kids to see, you only want them to see the one tab that you're on and you're not gonna bounce between tabs, that would be the one I would recommend using. However, I'm currently running what the, is, the, is the desktop right now. Um, once you click desktop, it'll ask you again, do you wanna do just the open application or do you want your entire screen? So I selected entire screen and then I clicked record. Once I clicked record, it counted down three, two, one. You should pause for a moment and then you can go ahead and start speaking. So a few things that uh, you will notice here is in the lower left, I can pause the recording. Um, I can use a focus mouse if I need to. If I wanted to use a pen, I could do all of that stuff on my computer screen. You'll also see this bar down here when I hold my mouse, I can move it around. You can also hide this. I actually tend to not hide that um, simply because I find it easier just to click the stop sharing. But if you wanted to, you could click pause. And then after you click pause, there will be a spot that opens up here that will allow you to stop the recording altogether. So that's a total preference thing. One of the things about Screencastify that is um, 
kind of a catch, I guess, is that it is a Chrome extension. So if you want the videos to save into your Google Drive, you need to have a Gmail address. So if you're, you're a Google school and you already have one, great, cool. Otherwise, you could either create a new Gmail for your Screencastify videos or you could use a personal one. Um, the other catch with the free version of Screencastify is that it only allows you a five minute limit on how long you can record videos. Now, I personally think that that's fine. I've never upgraded and I've been using Screencastify for years. Um, I don't think that any kid should have to listen to a video that is more than five minutes long because they just don't really quite have the attention span for that. Um, so let's say, for example, you wanted to do a review video segment on how to write an entire essay. Well, then chunk it. Do, you know, intro, body, conclusion, or however you wanted to do that. So think about if you wanted to do something more extensive, how could you break it down and chunk it for the kiddos? Um, because I had selected to show my entire desktop, I can now jump between tabs. So one of my favorite things to use this for is if I'm doing like a review on analyzing sources. So going through kind of our checklist of sources. So I will show maybe a few um, across a video and have them say which one they think is, is the most reliable or the least reliable or rank them in reliability and explain why is one way that you can use Screencastify. But notice because I selected for my entire desktop to show, I could bounce between those tabs and you could see all of those. So Screencastify, really awesome Google Chrome extension. However, you will want to have a Gmail uh, address for that. And you will also need to make sure you keep your videos under five minutes. The other cool part about Screencastify I didn't mention before is that you can get the videos to publish directly on to YouTube. So that's also something if you have a YouTube channel, you can link those up as well. So Screencastify, Google Chrome extension, option number two. So I've now shown you um, a couple of very simple ways that you can do recording. The first one, just a face recording of yourself if you were doing some type of lecture, would be just to use the regular camera app on your computer. And then secondly, if you wanted to do a screen recording, then you would use the Google Chrome Screencastify extension. Now I also know um, that a lot of schools have these babies, that they've got iPads and you can do screen recording on the iPads, which would be the next thing that I'm going to show you how to do today. Since iPads are very popular nowadays in school, I am going to show you how to do a screen recording of the iPad screen. So uh, I have my screen recording button added. Uh, you can see it's blinking there, so that's added to my quick menu. Uh, but in order to get to the screen recording, you would go to your settings, which is right down here. You would scroll until you see control center, customize controls, and then you'll notice that I have screen recording right here. Um, usually it would be in your more controls and if you were to hit like the green plus button over there it'll add it to your quick menu so these are all the things I have in my quick menu and screen recording is one of them and so what you would do is you would simply click on that it will give you a countdown of three two one and then you go ahead and you would start your recording when you finish your recording uh, you'll notice that up here it is recording, that's kind of blinking, flashing red for me. I would click that and it automatically will save into my photos on the iPad. And then you can share uh, with your students however you would need to. So I am going to get out of here. So say for example, I wanted to screen record something with whiteboard. I would click on that app on my iPad. And let's just create a new whiteboard. 
got it i can work with others super cool so i can go ahead and you know maybe we're working on prepositional phrases and i want to write a few of those to the mall beside the coffee cart etc you get it and then it's cool because you can um, anything that you interact with down here so if you highlight the prepositional phrases and you put a box around the object of the preposition you can show your students all of that the only other thing that's important with this is you need to make sure that your microphone is on and so when you have the wherever you have your screen whoopsie wherever you have your screen recording button if you you would have to press and hold and when you press and hold you'll see that it says microphone on you've got to double check that because it sometimes for whatever reason that microphone might end up getting shut off either accidentally or you never enabled it to begin with so do make sure that your microphone is on or you're going to end up wasting your time and you can see here I can click to stop recording um, we see the time that's lapsing it saves into my photos but instead of going to that drop down I can simply click this button right up here and that is how you would screen record on your iPad. And that's it. Those are three very easy ways. Now, I, again, I understand that there is other stuff that's out there. I know that there's really cool like movie maker things and Wii Video is out there. And uh, Wii Video is something very popular that's used in my district right now. And I just think that the, one, the ways that I showed you today are so simple. They're so simple. It is It is not rocket science to find the camera app. You can use a Google Chrome Screencastify extension if you want to show something literally on your screen. It's, I think they're kind of dummy proof. Um, the iPad, as of right now, I'm still not like 100% totally sold on the way that the screen recording is working on there because I'm trying to sync it right now with my OneDrive and it's taking a long time. Um, so that's something when you're first starting out with this stuff is you have to give yourself time. You have to have some grace with yourself. You need to try it and screw up a few times uh, before you get to, you know, kind of get in the hang of it. And one of the best things, like one of the most important things that I'm gonna say as far as like a teaching thing with this is that you, you need to be authentic. You need to screw up. You need to stumble over your words because you know what, when you teach, that's what you do. So typically, unless I completely screw up what I'm intent, like what I meant to say, I, I go with my first recording because it's as authentic as I can possibly get it. So that's like a huge, huge teaching recommendation for you when you're doing videos is don't be so scripted. And please, if you're, if you're doing something where you're typing out a paragraph or a sample paragraph or something like that, screw up show your mistakes. Ooh, I don't like that word. Ooh, man, that sounds funny. I got to fix that later. And then make a whole separate section, a whole separate video devoted to editing. Okay. Like let yourself kind of mess up. It's okay to do that. <laughs> the it engages the kids too. Like when I say something completely silly on there, I, I hear little giggles at certain points. And so it's kind of funny because I know when the kids get to certain points. With distance learning, um, a really cool thing that the science teacher that's on my team is doing is when she's got a video, so she's been doing videos with PowerPoints, which I could show you at a separate point in time, um, but she is doing a code word. And when kids hop onto her office hours on Microsoft Teams, or if you use Zoom, whatever, when they hop into class, they can't ask the question until they know the code word. And so, you know, they'll go on to our office hours and they'll say, okay, Mrs. Duda, the code word is banana, and here's my question. 
So then that way she knows they've at least watched it because that's something that's happening with distance learning is a lot of teachers are finding that kids aren't watching the videos. They're not paying attention. Ironically, I'm not really having that issue because I've used, I mean, a couple here and there because of course you're not gonna have 100% success with that. But the vast majority of my kids are watching the videos because they've been doing it for me almost all year already. Because I don't, I don't like to do the lecture thing. I don't wanna say the same thing four or five times a day. Ew. And then by, by period six, by the end of the day, it is scripted and it's not authentic anymore. So there is a couple of, of other ways around that. Um, but I personally like to do, especially if it's a review thing, I'll do a video um, or if it's some type of lecture, I'll do a video instead and even doing something where you can flip the classroom or saying you need to watch this video and then you're going to try, you know, whatever I had asked you to try. And then um, I'm, I'm floating around, fluttering around the room, helping kids and guiding kids. So it, it really frees you up as an educator. So that's a really, really nice way to try to incorporate video. So distance learning, great time to try one of these things out. I wish you the best of luck. With love.